G'day fellas, today on Briggsy's channel I'm going to be going over how I take photos of lures. Heaps of people have been DMing me on Instagram and Facebook saying how you're actually getting those shots of the lures. It is a lot to do with the lens. That I would say is a huge part of why the photos look the way they do, but it's not everything. I only take the pictures on certain days because the sun has to be shining through this skylight up here. At a certain time in the day, does this, where you can see just a line. Basically, I put the lure in the light area, and then the background is dark. So the lure just pops out really crazy. There's a few shots of lures I even do here at the kitchen sink, where I let the light in through the window, and it fully backlights the lure. See how my hand's lit up there? Later in the day, that is out here, so it's further away. And this background just goes, like, really dark. This is full on DIY style, like do it yourself. It's using my house and whatever kind of lighting situations I can find that are gonna make a lure look interesting and something that people wanna, you know, interact with and talk about. So this thing, 600D, EOS 600D, and I think they have different names in different countries. I don't even know how much they are now, but it was dirt cheap when I got it. It was like the body was 500 bucks or something. That lens is special because it gives a lot of blur to the background. It was 700. I'll have a look right now how much it is. So it's 300 bucks. I've just got this tripod, which I think it costs about 100 bucks. I wouldn't be able to take pictures solo without it. Aperture priority is a really good setting because it basically says I want the aperture to be this, and you, the camera, need to just sort everything else out for me. You don't have to feel like a hero by using manual all the time. I find that aperture priority or shutter priority, depending on the situation, are two really, really good settings. The, the only settings I use on this camera are shutter priority, aperture priority, and full manual. They're the three settings. They, they cover everything for me. A fan sent this in. Raphael Kopensky, I think his name is. Might be pronouncing it wrong, but this thing's what they use over in the US for striper and bluefish, which we call Taylor. He sent me pictures of it and I was like, oh, it's kind of a pencil popper. And he's like, yeah, but you tweak it. We tweak it side to side up there. He got me keen and I said, send it to me then. It's his mate that makes them tank. So I'll do a photo of it for him and give his mate a shout out on Facey and Instagram. The tail weight, it's so tail weighted, you know, it's just gonna cast a mile. While I'm set up like this and the wife and kids are out, I should probably do as many lures as I possibly can. Oh yeah, there's this thing, which actually another fan gave me. <laughs> he sent me a Nomad. Just, he was stoked for all the help we gave him over the years, talking to him about what lures to use and not location. We never talk about location, but just giving him tips on the techniques we use. And he watched our DVD and frothed on that as well. So shout out to Jai Ford for that. Might have to take a picture of one of these. The old SXR14 has to be my all time favorite lure. It's my all time favorite mass produced lure. I love a handcrafted lure these days, but this lure would have caught us more fish than anything else. And I've never taken a photo of it. Walk around the house with the lure in hand, with my camera, looking for that perfect lighting situation and I use this little extra light to fill in any dark places. One little light, it could be anything, you could even use a torch probably, but if there's something that's not looking right, I'll, I'll use this little thing handheld to try and find that perfect shot. I think this is good. Well, I always try and put the tip of the lure up and the tail down slightly. Gives a better feel. Trying to get my body further away so it blows out the light in the right place and hold the lure. I've got a good shot there. I'll show you. I've got a really good shot there. I like this. It's popping, man. It's not even a popper and it's popping, man. When it goes into Photoshop, first thing I do is it goes into the raw editor and I edit it quite extensively. When I get it onto the computer, that's where I really put the color into it. I sharpen the areas I want give the vignette, all the things that I think make a nice photo of a lure, I add in Photoshop. So the lighting 
and the composition is mostly done in camera but then a fair bit of tweaking I do on the raw file to get the most out of that image. What I'm doing here I can't really like give you a tutorial on because every photo in my vision of it and its perfect state, what I'm trying to get it to, uh, is different. So I can't, I can't just say change this setting, change that setting and you'll get an awesome looking photo because every single shot's different. That has to be trained. You want to develop your eye for what, a, what makes a good photo. So looking at other people's photos, looking at your own, seeing what's good about them, what's bad about them, being super critical of your own work. Developing that eye so that when you look at one of your shots, you straight away go, oh, I need to tweak the composition slightly. I need it to be a little bit less centered. I need a strong vignette on this one because there's not a lot of contrast in the image and that will make it pop out more. That's what's really fun about it and really cool about it is no two photos are the same you'll always find something interesting or cool to make out of that shot of yours. You let the camera and the lens do the hard work and then you polish it off on the computer and get as much as you can out of that shot. Uh, I think that people were a little bit precious about, oh, did you use Photoshop on your picture? Kind of see it as a negative thing if you're using Photoshop to adjust your image or something like that. They felt that they had to do it all within camera, but I think those times are pretty much gone because it's just a tool, basically. You're trying to capture an image of something and you're using tools to do that. The camera's a tool, the computer's a tool. If I had to put them all in place, the, the lens plays the biggest role in what that image is going to look like, then the camera, then the computer. Really, it's the lens. That lens, you, you'd struggle to take a crappy looking picture with that lens. It's, um, it's beautiful. And there's, there's lenses that are even better than it. So if you've got coin, Go out and buy a lens with the widest aperture that you can find and you will take nice pictures. Most people view content on their mobile phone nowadays. I am aware of that and I'm taking pictures and creating media that is much more zoomed in. Don't know if you want to be that close to my head, but zoomed in because most people are viewing things on a small screen now. And if you're way back there, it's not going to be as engaging as if you're in close to the jimmy or the lure or the fish or whatever it is. That's a conscious change and the lures reflect that as well. I try and find the most exciting, flary, bright, something that pops. Like that's what I want is something to pop out and it's time consuming. It takes me a bit of time to take these photos, but it's enjoyable. I like doing it. I love taking photos of lures. I love lures. Pretty much love all lures. I don't really like soft plastics, but I love all pretty much all lures, especially poppers and stick baits lately. I'm frothing on them. So I've got more of these DIY films coming out. I'm gonna start vlogging on this channel and I'm gonna start doing reviews on this channel as well. So thanks heaps for subscribing, fellas. You've kickstarted the channel off. Couple hundred subs, I'm frothing on it. I hope you really got something out of this and thanks heaps for watching. Yeah.